Hello, this is Dazzling One. This week's discussion is on insect drones. I came across an article from several months ago, dated on May 4th of 2017 by Fox News Tech, titled How Insect Cyborgs Could Battle Terrorism. I'll read the article and then I'll share my thoughts. Battalions of insect cyborgs, stealthier than any man-made mini-drone, could soon hit the skies to fight against terrorism. Draper, along with Howard Hughes Medical Institute at Janilia Research Campus, have created its cyborg dragonflies in an effort to aid intelligence and reconnaissance, known as Dragonfly. The project would allow the U.S. military and intelligence services to deploy these cyborgs as micro-drones capable of spying for their masters. In addition to the secretive nature of the drones, they are also expected to be more agile, lighter, and smaller. Why build cyborg insects? The U.S. military, like others around the world, has long pursued tiny flying robots to deploy for surveillance. Armed with tech like cameras and sensors, these flying robots could gather data that larger technology or humans could not. To be useful in realistic conditions, the drones would need to be able to fly for long periods of time and be able to navigate around obstacles. They also need to be able to carry the weight of the data gathering systems. Many programs building tiny drones are inspired by studies of insects and often try to mimic insects and replicate how they move. Dragonflies use four independently controlled wings to fly, something rather unusual in nature. This is a very attractive feature for military purposes because the four wings provide key capabilities. Hovering to listen in on conversation, rapid direction changes to follow a suspected terrorist, darting to avoid detection, and even the ability to fly in reverse, to go back and zero in on a license plate. These are great advantages that the dragonfly's method of flight can provide. Found on every continent except Antarctica, dragonflies are also native to all sorts of terrains, from desert through to wetlands and sea level through to mountains. This wide range of habitats, where it can blend in to spy and gather information makes the dragonfly a good choice. The technology also has potential to be applied to other types of insects. How does it work? There have been many attempts to build machines that replicate the dragonfly, but they've all struggled for a number of reasons. One key challenge has been the complex aerodynamics of the four wings. Fabrication of such complex creatures at such a tiny size has also been very tough. Draper has succeeded in achieving these attractive dragonfly capabilities in a different way. Instead of trying to replicate the dragonfly with robotics, their solution is to merge advanced technology with the dragonfly. There are two fundamental parts to transforming the insects into stealthy recon teams. Backpacks for the dragonflies to wear and changes made inside the insect. It uses technology on the inside and outside of the dragonfly to be able to steer it and control its data collection. Each drone is fitted with a standard issue tiny backpack, which includes a guidance system with miniaturized advanced navigation, energy harvesting, and optical stimulation technology. Special neurons are also put inside the dragonfly nerve cord. Guidance commands are sent from the backpack. These connect with these special neurons that then help to steer. How does the dragonfly operate? In the simplest of terms, the drone is steered via the light. HHMI conducted research into the steering neurons that control flight in the dragonfly's nervous system by using synthetic biology and inserting genes similar to those in eyes. The team was able to make these steering neurons sensitive to light. Draper is developing something called optrodes that activate these neurons with pulses of light. The light is sent from the dragonfly's backpack and channeled into the nerve cord. Once kitted out with all the inventions, the operator can guide the dragonfly beyond surveillance. These cyborg drones hold potential to help humans in other ways in the future, including improved medical treatment and agriculture. The tech developed for dragonfly could help advance better precision, medicine, medical treatments, and diagnostics in humans. Ideally, this could then lead to better therapies and elimination of side effects. For example, Draper's flexible optrodes could enable miniaturized diagnostics. It could help to safely access neural targets and deliver therapies with more precision. Another application could be tackling the bee problem. Dragonflies are some of the most agile insects, so the backpack tech would also be viable for other insects, including some of the other most agile ones, like bees. The honeybee population has dramatically reduced. Reduction in pollution is a threat to both U.S. agriculture and future food supplies in general. Honeybees could be equipped with the dragonfly system so that researchers can monitor their health and behavior. By aiding research, the tech could help solve the honeybee problem. That was the article in its entirety, and I found it very fascinating that they are basically genetically modifying dragonflies. Dragonflies are everywhere during the summertime. I saw probably a few dozen 
over the summer whenever I take my dog out. And it's interesting that this is being marketed as something that's going to be used on terrorists. Now, conspiracy theorists might say that these dragonflies are going to be used to spy on the general population. And it could be done easily because people would just see the dragonfly flying around and think, oh, it's just another bug. And it could be listening in on conversations, taking pictures, feeding information. And this is the direction of modern technology and artificial intelligence. It's also interesting how synthetic biology is being utilized and how they're saying they want to do this with honeybees. Now, I'm of the belief that if they're telling us this in this article in May of 2017, it's already been done. They're just letting us in on something they've probably achieved years ago. But what are your thoughts on this story? Do you think this is a good thing? Do you think this is going more toward what it talks about in the Bible when Yeshua said in Matthew 24 that it would be as the days of Noah with them tampering with the genetic code of dragonflies and other insects? Do you think this is going to be used as a means of surveillance on the general population? Let me know what you think and be sure to check out Monday night's live stream and I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless.